Ryzen APU release date just changed. X870 motherboards are coming late. Get your AMD and even NVIDIA GPU ready, and AMD is changing the Ryzen 9700X to be the new gaming king. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I recently went over a story that more or less seemed to confirm the leaks that we had been hearing that AMD's next-gen Ryzen APUs were set for release July 15th. You can see right here, this one came from ASUS's own website, showing these with the new Ryzen 9 processor releasing 715. Well, it's looking like AMD may have just changed that. As you can see right down here, leakers, uh, both of these leakers, a well-known leaker, Golden Pig Upgrade, who, as they say, are known for reliable information, have both claimed that the release date for the Strix Point has been shifted from July 15th to July 28th. You can see it right here, July 15th, now July 28th, what a sad story. Then HXL was posting it here, and here is this other leaker who seemed to also confirm that both the sales and review NDA or set for release 728. And of course, while AMD has somewhat been known for making quite a bit of last minute changes lately, believe it or not, this isn't the only last minute change I'm gonna be discussing today. But before I get to that, while still talking release dates, Many of you know that AMD recently announced their X870E and X870 next-gen AM5 motherboards. And board partners also announced multiple upcoming boards that they plan to release, but no one ever actually gave a release date. Of course, AMD didn't really give us a set release date for the CPUs either. They just said in July, but we didn't hear anything about motherboards except rumors that they would likely be releasing after the CPU's release. Well, it looks like that is in fact the case. As you can see right down here, really quickly, of course, we know that these new boards now come with the USB 4 support standard. They also come with PCI Express Gen 5 support as standard across both graphics and M.2 NVMe slots, while also supporting higher Expo overclock speeds. But unfortunately, we're not gonna see any of that until it looks like September 30th. You can see right here that WCCF Tech claims that according to their sources, the X870E and X870 motherboards will not be hitting retail until September 30th, which as they state is two months after the launch of Ryzen 9000 CPUs, making this an odd release, though obviously they do have 600 series motherboards, but if you're buying an entire new system, you're likely going to wait a couple months for those 800 series parts. Then again, they aren't really different from current gen motherboards, so if you're planning on picking up a Ryzen 9000 CPU, are you willing to wait for new motherboards? Let me know down in the comments below. And next up, AMD officially announced their new Adrenaline Edition drivers, and this comes with some very interesting stuff. In fact, there's a grand total of three really interesting things that kind of coincide with this, starting with the fact that FSR 3.1 is officially here. For those who don't remember, FSR 3.1 is actually a boost. If you remember, FSR 3 technically just added frame generation, while 3.1 actually makes things better in terms of upscaling versus FSR 2.2. You can see right here first we have temporal stability as well as ghosting reduction. Well, it's now here and it's officially released in five games. I know this says six, but as you can see, God of War Ragnarok is coming soon. So that obviously is a really big deal, but with it comes a second really big deal, and that is their enhanced frame generation. As you can see here, it says that it decouples frame generation technology that works seamlessly with other upscaling solutions, meaning if, let's say, you own an NVIDIA GPU that doesn't support frame generation, i.e. RTX 30 or RTX 20 cards, you can now have frame generation while still using what most would argue the better upscaling tech, DLSS. And AMD has more or less confirmed this really quickly. These are some of the frame rates that they're showing, even though this does say FSR 3s. So this is more just showing they also announced support for 60 games and counting, although it's really 60 available and upcoming games. Still, that is a pretty big number given they launched this just months ago. Either way, as you can see, FSR 3.1 support, 
basically looks the same as regular FSR3 support, meaning RTX 20 series and above cards are supported, though they do recommend RTX 30. Basically, this is AMD once again kind of one-upping NVIDIA in a way in the fact that NVIDIA doesn't offer frame generation with RTX 20 or 30 series cards, and I'd argue that's likely intentional just to make their RTX 40 series cards look better. Regardless, now AMD has stepped in and is giving frame generation away to NVIDIA's older series cards. Now, unfortunately, we are only talking five games right now, but we've seen how FSR 3 has been supported in significantly more games over the last few months, so hopefully this happens with 3.1 as well. And this brings me to the final thing that all of this does, and that is finally adding real official support before it was more or less a preview, but official support for Anti-Lag 2. Remember that Anti-Lag 2 is basically a relaunch of Anti-Lag Plus, except it's not supported at a driver level. The reason that is is because their driver level supported one was causing gamers to get banned. So obviously they had to completely do away with that. And now we have Anti-Lag Plus, which unfortunately does have to be added by the game developer. And with that said, unfortunately, it's still only supported in one game, Counter-Strike 2. And this one, with that said, is up to 40% latency reduction at 4K with the 7900 GRE graphics card. So pretty impressive here, I definitely will say, but I do want to point something out that is a little odd. Back to the FSR 3.1, there's something that I noticed when it comes to recommendations for frame generation use. As you can see, it says to use frame generation, you should disable anti-lag, which to me is really odd because one of the reasons why we want things like anti-lag 2 is to remove latency that's caused by frame generation. So this one really does seem odd to me. I actually found some people that were talking about the fact that you can see here the reason why is to avoid issues with frame pacing, smoothness, or stuttering. And I found some people who were complaining about stuttering and found out it was because they needed to disable anti-lag. Now, hopefully they're only talking about first generation anti-lag here, especially because I will say that one of the benefits that they discuss is that it actually has in-game options to optimally pace frames. So hopefully Anti-Lag 2 will work well with RDNA 3.1's frame generation, but for now it does look like at least the original Anti-Lag does have to be disabled. That's just something that I wanted to point out. And lastly for today, if you've been following the channel, to which if you haven't, what are you doing? You definitely want to do that. Just subscribe. It's free and hit that bell icon so you can get notification on all the latest PC hardware news. Regardless, if you do follow the channel, you know that AMD basically admitted that Ryzen 9000 will not beat the previous gen, i.e. 7000 X3D models in gaming. Now, in that video, I discussed the fact that that really isn't much of a surprise given the 7000 series didn't beat the 5800 X3D either, so I don't really know why this is such a big deal, but apparently AMD felt quite a bit of pressure from this because it looks like they are revising the specs of their upcoming Ryzen 7 9700X, specifically to beat the 7800X3D. And of course, if it beats that, it beats the 7950X3D, all of those. And yeah, this one is really wild. As you can see right down here, it says from the company's Computex 2024 announcement, it goes over the specs and it specifically says that both the 9700X 8 core and 9600X 6 core chips come with a 65 watt TDP. And of course, that was something that I discussed in the announcement because when we compare that to the current 7700X, you can see that that one comes with a 105 watt TDP. Well, it looks like AMD is completely reversing course on that because according to the most recent leak, the 9700X will undergo a set of changes to change its TDP and PPT values to, well, increase them. And get this, we know that the 7700X originally came with a 105 watt TDP, but instead of going significantly less, AMD looks to be planning to increase the TDP higher all the way up to 120 watts. Basically, it really looks like AMD is wanting to up the performance of 
the similarly priced 9700X to the 7800X 3D so it can beat it out in gaming. So while that does it for today, if the 9700X is better than the 7800X 3D, will that make you want to buy it or do you just want to wait for the 9000X 3D chips? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.